what is a targeted individual. Is there currently a spiritual war in the world and in our minds? When coincidences are too improbable, it is no longer coincidence, it is synchronicity. Being close to a targeted individual will reveal uncomfortable truths by uncomfortable means. So stay tuned for this gruesome affair. My girlfriend was a targeted individual. It ruined everything. Finding yourself in the talons of an owl in the shadows of the forest moonlight. It's a gruesome it's affair. A gruesome affair. affair. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. I heard it at the park. I'd meet one of my friends there on Saturdays to do CrossFit and Muay Thai boxing, training under the sun. There's no better way to work out on a late summer day. I was feeling good. There's an area where children play and one of the parents appeared to be singing it row your boat. That lullaby reminds me of so many things. Childhood. Innocence. Wonder. All those things that seemed like what life was about until, well, until we're indoctrinated to be good citizens, paying our taxes, buying the trendy products, all the while following the false prophets of fake news, Insta, Netflix, Spotify, YouTube, and everything else. When we were closer to Source, or God, or whatever, that's when I saw her. Jet black hair, piercing, sparkling eyes, and her beauty just didn't quit no matter what angle my eyes caught her at. Little did I know that this was not a girl. Maybe it was love, maybe not. Love at first sight, lust at first sight. I can't put my finger on it, but she definitely was some kind of portal into a special place in hell that has scorched my soul. It's been a trip through heaven to hell, and now back to heaven again after the aftermath. Now I know things I wish I didn't know. I have seen things I wish I had never seen, and I felt emotions so good and so bad. I feel like my emotional skin was burnt to the third degree and is now numb. One thing for sure, I see the world with new eyes now. So here's how it went down. She was standing there. She looked like a college student standing amongst the family folks at the jumping springboards where the kids were jumping and playing. I was single, so I couldn't help but to say something. These kids seem to know how to have some good fun, I said, while not looking at her. She was quiet. Yeah, she eventually said in a very faint voice. I've never seen you at this park. You just hear stalking kids or what? I said. She hesitated. I have a lot of school work to do, so I'm just here to procrastinate as best as I can, she said procrastinate? Dang, did you know that is one of the things I am really good at. I even procrastinate procrastinating. It's a superpower. I said, trying to sound confident. I'm almost impressed, she said. We continued chatting. I was nervous and excited talking to her. It was just weird, such a pretty girl just here all alone and with her whole day open to spend with me. That's when a kid jumping on the trampoline screamed out, I'm so good at procrastinating. Life is but a dream. Big word for a little kid. I looked at her and she was unfazed. I tried to look unfazed too, but I had a light uneasy feeling in my gut. This was weird. I tried to play it cool. I checked my phone. The visible leading part of the message read, Been procrastinating. It was from Michael. A weird coincidence. Almost like those synchronicities. But I don't believe in that stuff. Well, not at that time at least. 
I didn't rush to stop talking to her. And well, she spent the night at my place. That was day one. Intense. I won't get into details, but really intense, if you know what I mean. I'll stop there. It just felt so meant to be. Maybe with a sprinkle of too good to be true and a side order of dread. Something about her made me uneasy. She was so smart. She knew everything. We talked about some forbidden topics, conspiracy theories. She got it all. She understood it all. Not in a surprised way, but in a could it be more obvious, nonchalant manner. She seemed to have no illusions. This was amazing, but also dreadful. Most girls I know can't see this. I like the ones who can see it, but most are living in 3D. They love entertainment, celebrities, and any form of disassociation and distracting pleasures of self-destruction. Not Aline. She got it all. It came naturally to her. She could see evil plain as day. She said she didn't smoke, didn't drink, and didn't even eat sugar. This was amazing. But later, I would discover it was also all lies. So, so many things she said were just lies on top of lies. She weaves a mask of perfection and all-knowing with her lies. This is how I learned to trust my intuition. Because everything she said that I thought was a lie turned out to be exactly a lie. The thing is, the truth was always much worse than I had imagined. She lived in shame, covered it with lies, and in the process adding further to the shame. She protected the perimeter of her false reality and apparently perfect self with a border of pure rage. Call her lies out and you will be the target of her rage. I forgive her now for her lies. She can't help it. Only later would I realize that this beautiful girl is living minute by minute in an emotional hell. She hates herself and her base emotions are shame and disgust. This is only matched by her absolute disgust for regular people. She tries to hide that. Still, a part of you knows. Stick around, and eventually, all of you knows. This is another thing I learned, ultimately. There are actually no secrets. With time, the veil lifts, and all comes into light of day. We should all keep this in mind while playing this game called life. On our first night together, the windows in the living room became completely fogged from our passion. Our warm bodies felt best embraced. She told me it was her first time. That I knew was a lie. More about that later. Like I said, when she lies, I know, but the truth is always, every single time, much worse than I could have imagined. And when I say worse, I mean your soul is not just deceived, but a piece of it is consumed. This is some kind of special but demonically possessed girl. There are so many like this in 2022. We slept good that night, but I awoke when I had a nightmare. I dreamed that I was a beam of light and there was a large matte black demonic creature somehow sucking and feeding on my light. The creature is hard to describe. It was like a pterodactyl with bony black bat-like wings and it was somehow perched on a light beam which somehow felt like my life energy as a representation. It was feeding on it. It was disturbing. I never had a dream like this before. I felt like I was suddenly the host of some kind of spiritual parasite. I awoke. I was instantly wide awake in the cool, pitch black bedroom. The blanket felt warm. There was a near silent buzz in the room. It's hard to describe, but I thought it was like a power supply for something, just buzzing slightly in a high audible frequency. 
I could not tell from what direction it was coming from, but I can say it was the first time I experienced this in my bedroom. Eileen was sleeping next to me. I have to say, she smelled kind of bad. I could not put my finger on what it was. Maybe it was just a cologne I don't like, but something unpleasant, something foul. I looked at her sleeping, and she looked like the most beautiful girl I have ever seen. It was weird, but I noticed her two tattoos. She had a tattoo on her back right shoulder blade of an O with a horizontal line through it, and behind her right ear was a small faint butterfly. I wondered why I was feeling uneasy and paranoid. I don't know. I looked at the clock. 3.33. Weird. It felt like just a couple of minutes had passed since I awakened. I rolled over and went back to sleep. That was the first night. I wondered why I had such uneasy feelings and such a weird dream. Well, let me just say the weird dreams would only get worse from here. In the morning, I felt amazing. We made eggs and just talked. I asked her about the tattoo on her back and what it meant. It looked like some kind of symbol. She said that it was her blood type. Typo negative. She said, I knew this was a lie. Talking with her is more about her constructing false narratives of reality than anything real. You mean you have a big O and a line tattooed on your back because of your blood type? I asked. Yeah. She said, I felt uneasy. I mean, cool girl, but that symbol looks more like she's part of some kind of cult or something organized sweep it under the weird box like everything else with this brilliant and beautiful girl. I mean, I can handle weird, but I also hope to find some answers. So, now I had a girlfriend, but it was a dreadful feeling of doom. It is strange how attraction and repulsion can be intertwined. This was the kind of attraction that the terror in your gut is a prophecy of the impending doom. Despite the unsettling doom, she said the best things. She had an uncanny intuition. Later I would learn that she is in fact intuitive, and she is quite literally spiritually connected to the wisdom of evil. She played piano, as did I, just as Satan himself was an angel of music. There is a blessing in music, in how to influence energy and send messages. We could spend nights at the piano playing songs together and singing together. We rarely watched anything, maybe some Paul Joseph Watson videos from time to time, but they were always just 10 minutes or so. YouTube videos and scary stories, of course, like smoking owl tales. We kept each other warm throughout the winter. Did you know that there is a science about how our vital life force flows through our hearts? We can feel it. We can synchronize with other people's hearts. This is how we feel with our hearts. And when the connection breaks, it literally manifests as heartache. For now, when we were close, I could feel we were in sync. Our hearts were communicating, but it wasn't all good. At times, her energy made me very uneasy. We only visited her family once. She said her dad didn't love her, and neither did her mother. I would be lying if I told you this didn't scare me, and the weird box was overflowing. On top of this, she had no friends. A few associates, sure, but she had no girlfriends, nobody close. She had some weird story about her ex-boyfriend and how they lived together, but she was still somehow a virgin. He worked for the government from home. They spent 
many days together. The story, like most, simply didn't add up. When I told her that, she just told me the same story in more detail and took a victim position. Later she would tell me that he made her eat puke. All lies, except her sisters, who she seemed to have a new poison pill to tell about, each of them, on the daily. I remember her coming in the apartment one night and just thinking to myself, there is something evil about this girl, but I just can't put my finger on it. Despite my intuition sounding alarm bells, I couldn't resist going further and wandering further down this dangerous rabbit hole. Summer came, and despite the balmy air, the long sunny days, life was getting darker and darker. Eileen was becoming very jealous. She had tracked down information about former girlfriends and had become more of an expert about them than I ever was. She even knew what they were up to currently by following them on Instagram. We'd walk past a restaurant in town and she'd say, someone was here earlier today. They don't say social media can be toxic for nothing. I would take it even further and say that using social media is very dangerous if you don't have an exact purpose for being there. One can quickly fall into a dark abyss and let's not kid ourselves. The companies know this and exploit it. We flew down to Crete, the big island in Greece, on vacation. There were some cheap tickets down there and it looked like a good place to get some sun, beach, and a break from daily life. I have to say that the beaches were beautiful. The warm, totally clear water was absolutely amazing to swim in. And we tried to not miss a single sunset. The sunsets were gorgeous. Just watching the reds and golds permeate the sky as the sun made its final glow for another beautiful day. Then click, it's nighttime. And the sky show continues with stars, the Milky Way, and a clarity that comes with being on a remote part of a Mediterranean island. Eileen was not enjoying it as much as I. She was irritable and found many things to complain about. I don't like it here. The architecture is so ugly. I just can't relax. She said, architecture. I said, what do you mean? There's a few hotels over there. I added, nothing made sense, and I know she was just trying to make up a reason for why she was not able to enjoy the day. The next day, the woman who owned the small hotel we were staying in brought us coffee and fresh pomegranate. There are actual pomegranate trees in the courtyard. The courtyard was beautiful, with the stone tables, rigid wood chairs, and a stone patio and it was surrounded by plants, succulents, and trees with dangling, ripe pomegranate fruits. This was beautiful. Eileen was crying. She was trying to hide behind her hair. She played with the bangs hanging over her face. While sometimes she looked like the most beautiful girl in the world, other times she looked demonic, ugly, and witch-like. This is how she looked now, evil, scary, and her energy seemed dark, evil, and dangerous. You probably should know that I eventually am going to hurt you, she said. Hurt me, I said. Yeah, she said. There's demons, you know, she added. Demons, I asked. She stayed quiet. What do you mean? I asked. She stayed quiet. I didn't even want to come here. She said. Nobody loves me. She added. My dad had an affair with a young Ukrainian woman while my mom was pregnant with me. She said. My dad doesn't care. He's a psychopath, you know. He is definitely a psychopath. He just cares about money, women, and power. She said and the occult. 
she added. Remember that baptism I didn't invite you to? She said, yeah. It's because they're all hostile. A cult, I said. She started telling me a story about how her ex-boyfriend was actually a handler. He called her a slave, and she was. It's not just abuse, it's ritualized. She said, why? I asked, I don't know. They're sick. There's millions like me. She said, Millions? I asked. I could feel my heart beating. Everything with this girl was too good to be true, or so bad it's unreal. I knew she told me some lies, but I still loved her. I knew she had been through some stuff, like her family seemed quite powerful, but had suffered chronic generational abuse. It was psychological abuse. Lies, belittlement, guilting, gaslighting, blame shifting, reaction abuse, sleep deprivation, false narratives that reverse the role of victim and the abuser. It was all a part of their game. They all played it. Trauma, mind games, volleying for who controls the false narratives, physical abuse that I don't want to write about or think about, and I'm not talking about hitting fragmented personalities and obvious false narratives that are rescripted and defended by rage. They drop the poison pill rap sheet on every member. Personal boundaries are not respected. The worst is assumed and exaggerated if not completely fabricated. You know everyone's dirt before you even meet them and there is a lot of dirt. My ex-boyfriend was not a boyfriend at all. He was my handler, she said, and started to cry and wiped some tears with a thick smear of mucus on her arm. Her arm was drenched. Her eyes were swollen wet and red. Her eyes quivered. She stared at me with those creepy, predator-wide black pupils. It scared me. It made my heart hurt and stomach sick. He'd spit in my mouth and call me his slave. That is what they do. They program you. You don't know why until later. It could be anything. It happens at all levels. They fragment your mind and can trigger you to do things with a single word. Is this like MK Ultra or something? I asked. Don't think you're so smart with your conspiracy theories, but yes, it is Monarch. She said, Don't be stupid. We're all MK Ultrad, she added. What do you mean by that? I asked. So stupid, she said. NPCs, she added. Remember any TV shows with a healthy family or healthy real role model characters? She said. You don't realize calling it fake news is just to mock people. She continued. If feminism is about supporting women, wouldn't they be happier now? Nobody's happier now. She said crying. If it's not a product placement, then it's just another session of fear-based trauma mind control. She said, and the worst is when you get your own personal handler and parents who only birthed you so they have a bargaining chip and something to torture. This was all hitting me hard. I put some chill music I had downloaded on my tablet on. I was just sick of this and wish I could do something to bring the good vibe back. This was supposed to be a vacation, not a nightmare on an island. She said the butterfly is like a logo. It represents the split mind, compartmentalization. They target families with generational abuse because we are more vulnerable to disassociation from reality, we need to be. The butterfly represents a symbolic transformation or metamorphosis from a caterpillar to a cocoon representing dormancy to a butterfly, the new creation. Did they take you to some military base or something? I asked. No, she said. Most of the programming happened at home from her dad and a psychologist. 
and her ex-boyfriend in an apartment in the southern part of the city. This is the guy that called her a slave. He worked for the government. I started getting some paranoid ideas. My mind was racing. What is my role in this? I asked. She didn't answer. I would later realize what my role was. I have to say that I didn't feel targeted. Something was just off. Everything just started so fast. It had been like she had just picked me out of a crowd on the street and just love bombed my life relentlessly, killing me with kindness. But there was a streak of dread in all of this loving attention. I felt like I was attracted to the light of an anglerfish, and my intuition knew that there was a set of huge, sharp teeth that were eager to feast on my soul. My feelings were split. While my intuition felt this way, another part of me questioned my sanity for feeling it. This is the essence of calculated gaslighting. Just go, she screamed, and she got up and pushed me. I stepped back. I am not stupid and would not even defend myself when a female swings at me or pushes me because I know how the story will fall later. Where am I going to go? You want me to leave in a rental car, meet back in Copenhagen? I asked. The woman from the hotel came down. Is everything all right? She asked. He won't leave me alone. Aline screamed like an evil shriek while pointing at me. The hotel owner asked politely that I leave. I left. This was a weird situation. I am away with my so-called girlfriend walking alone down some empty one-lane road on some Greek island. I had a lot of thoughts. Honestly, I was feeling like the abuse she had survived, the damage, and whatever dark spiritual parasites she had were starting to infect me. I had a headache. My back and thighs had a strange pins and needles feeling. My throat was tight. My stomach was twisting. It's times like these that I realize why some people drink. My head literally hurt. I made up a name for this. Brain break. After about 20 minutes, I sat down. I pulled out my phone. Dang it, no headset. But I opened iTunes and played Row Your Boat by Yellow Wolf. This is not some promotion of that song. It just helps me sometimes. I love the line, the media they feed to you graffitis up your vision. So true. So true right now. And I mean, right now. I walked back. When I got back, she was lying in bed. She got up and came to me. Sorry about that. She said in a shy, sweet, girly voice, and she hugged me. And that was it for now. We went out for some lunch and chased the sun to see a sunset at a new beach. It was an amazing day, excluding the state-sponsored mind-controlled trigger, demonic possession, and mental instability. We had tried a few beaches on the western side of the island the first few days and decided to spend the second half of the week in a more resort area on the eastern side of the island. We thought that the more built up hotel environment would be more tacky, but honestly, it was beautiful. Everything was within walking distance and the beaches were gorgeous with warm, clear paradise water and powdery white sand. The evenings were beautiful. The palm trees would be blowing in the wind and, my god, the stars were like a free light show of wonder. I looked up a lot as we walked along the beach at night. The second night, we were at a cafe by the beach. It was called the Fig Tree Cafe, and it was amazing. Just cool vibes. There was a table a little bit down and closer to the beach where a character kept looking at us. He kept repeating into his phone, Eline. Eileen, Eileen. And this was a strange coincidence. 
I noticed Aline was very uncomfortable and wasn't eating what she ordered. I ate hers. I can't resist. It was good. Can we just go back to the hotel? I feel sick. She said, Okay, let's get out of here. I replied, We handled the practicalities and bolted out of there. I overheard two people at the table where the man had been talking on the phone. Hey, you know Elvis is in town this week? Said one. Sure, and I hear Bigfoot is doing the warm up, said the other. This was strange. Everything so beautiful and paradise like, but the energy was just bad. I normally have such high and positive energy. Aline seems to either bring me way up or take me deep down, almost like hell sometimes. I think I am in hell when I'm with her. Later, I would find out why. And it was not knowledge that would make anything better. Monday morning, we had to catch our return trip. Despite many strange moments, I did not want to go. I liked our little piece of uneasy paradise, but real life has to happen too. At the airport, a man behind me in the security line said to me, Jason, try to keep it together. He was another passenger. I asked him what he meant by that. He didn't answer. How do you know my name is Jason? I asked. He spoke to one of the security guards and said, This man, while pointing at me, is harassing me. That's it. He is telling an authority figure that I am harassing him. I step back and keep my mouth shut. I am getting used to this. Later, I would discover that there's a word for it. DARVO. It's an anacronym for Deny, Attack, and Reverse Victim Offender. It's a nasty tactic. I sure can say that there's a lot of coincidences and unnerving when I am in the presence of Aline. That weird look of hers, sometimes sweet, sometimes demonic. Either she is a shapeshifter or my mind is playing tricks on me. We board the plane. I just pulled my baseball cap over my face while leaning back and tried to enjoy the flight. I wanted to tune out her dark energy. I don't want to watch any movies on this flight. My nerves are burnt now, and I just can't let my eyes see anything triggering. When we arrive at the airport, we go to the baggage reclaim. I didn't see that man who accused me of harassing him and wanted to keep my distance if I did. Everything seemed normal. Aside from being a little tired, we take the metro back into the city and sure enough, something weird has to happen. A woman on the train is humming. Hmm, 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 hmm. This is starting to get weird. I don't know if it is the phenomenon of confirmation bias where you see something everywhere because you are aware of it. This is like if I say half of the cars are black Teslas, and tomorrow, surely it seems like every other car you look at is indeed a black Tesla. The other alternative is much worse. It is that this is all somehow by design and coordinated, but what does that mean? Is this gang stalking agenda real? Are these people paid to harass us? And particularly Eline and whoever she is in the company of? Or is this some kind of spiritual warfare where dark spirits whisper in the ears of these random people to say these things and whisper in the ears of people we know to have them send cryptic text messages at specified times to magnify the effect of the campaign? Further. What is the goal of this harassment? Do the spirits just want to keep us in a state of fear or unease? And for what? Is the theory of the luch real? This is the idea that there are dark spirits in this realm and they feed on human misery and fear. Turn on the news, war, sickness, accidents. All the worst things that happened on the planet are described, photos shown, 
so that every day these things are in your mind. It doesn't matter if it's 1942, 1982, or 2022. The names and the places change, but the story remains the same. War, sickness, accidents, political infighting. It's your daily dose of anger and fear. It's a wonder that more people don't just turn it off and live their lives with a smile. Gang stalking, targeted individuals. This takes it to a new level. You can't turn it off. And apparently, even flying to a foreign country doesn't seem to reduce the stalking. And then there is always that spiritual question. So many questions. Am I just imagining this? Maybe I am crazy. Maybe I am sane. Maybe everybody else is crazy. Mass formation psychosis. Maybe I know too much now. Your heart knows something is off and the tightness in your neck, twisting, nodding in your stomach and pins and needles sensation running up and down your legs and back knows something is just not right. I get this feeling from Eileen. Maybe it's when I resonate with her on that frequency. She brings it to me, this realm of abuse. It's a realm of psychological and spiritual abuse that is just subtle enough to make you think you're crazy and just strong enough to drive you crazy, all while the anglerfish light blinds you. And if you mention it, you're blamed. The safety is always off on the Darvo trigger. Like at the airport, address the abuser and you will be accused of being the abuser. It's the way the game works. Figure out the game and your reputation will be smeared with lies on top of more lies. You are playing it. Nobody tells you the rules. Nobody wants you to know the rules. You have to figure it out. And eventually, you do. And that's when they want to destroy you. So, we're back in the city and I realize that Eileen is starting to lose herself. Each day that passes, she gets more and more unpredictable. One morning she wakes and says, I had a dream my father attacked you with hedge clippers. Good morning to you too, I say. I realize that I have to be very careful with my words. This is called walking on eggshells. It seems that whatever I say is somehow used against me. If I ask her to do anything, she accuses me of guilting her into whatever it is. I try to get her out each day. One afternoon I say to her, come on, let's go for a walk. And she replies, I'm not your dog to take on walks. Wow, she knows how to make a low vibe mood in any situation. What happened to my sweet girlfriend? Was she a Project Monarch victim? Or is she just trying to get attention with that story? So many questions, but I can't even ask her to go for a walk without upsetting her. And when she does join me, I feel like we're being followed or watched. And someone always says something to knock me off my square. One night, a couple weeks after we got back from Greece, Aline wakes me up in the middle of the night. I look at the clock, 3 a.m. on the dot. She is convulsing. Seriously, this is like an exorcist schema. Her hair was all stringy like a crazy person's. That's a weird touch. It's all just so weird, like it's scripted. She runs in the bathroom, and I chase after her. She pushes me hard. I know never to touch a girl, even in self-defense. You know how the stories go. She runs in the kitchen. I follow her. I tell her, five second breath. Take a five second breath, baby. The butcher block is there with a big kitchen cutting knife on it. I see it. She sees it. The weird thing is, I got an impulse to grab it but I didn't, and I wouldn't. Her psycho eyes stayed on mine while her hands leaped to the butcher block and grabbed the knife's handle with two hands, but she did not lift the knife. It all happened in an instant, but the war in her mind was so apparent. Her skin was glazed with sweat, our hearts beating heavily in the dark stillness of the bewitching hour. I softly took her hands and walked her out of the kitchen and into the living room and we sat on the sofa. I did this saying, 
let's go in a room where there's no knives. Things would never get better from here. Well, not as long as she was around. If all that stuff did happen to her, I realized that she is cursed. One day I would take ayahuasca and see her demons. But for now, I just had to witness all the evil, sick craziness that these demons create. Her demons comfort her. She can call them anytime she wants, but she's not mentally strong enough to do it. She is very weak against them, and they have our whole realm to operate in. I don't think she realizes those demons only can possibly have the power that you give them. They have no power over her or any of us on their own. It's not the first time it's happened, but it would definitely not be the last. I actually got her agoraphobic butt out of the apartment for a walk. There was a protest. It was a group that was holding signs resisting the vaccinations for COVID. We started to walk in that direction to see what it was about when Aline suddenly turned and stomped off. I ran after her and asked, What's wrong? She replied, You just care about the world and not about us. Everything is walking on eggshells with her. Everything is a double bind, blame shifting, lies, belittlement, catastrophization, manipulation, passive aggressive abuse, and projection. It's just a regular day in her dark world. Honestly, I was starting to think life would be better without her. She left. She went back to the apartment, packed all her stuff, every last thing, and left. She texted, I just crossed a street and almost got killed by a bus. I am really scared. That would be the last time she leaves because she never came back. That night, I was so upset, I called my dad and just talked and talked until I fell asleep. I know it's bad style, but it was like my whole world was folding from the inside out. I had been trying to love a very damaged person who was infested with dark spiritual parasites. These dark spiritual parasites move on to those close to her. I tried to love a girl who will never love herself. She's a demon and an angel. She's a demon because she brings pain to whomever is close to her. She's an angel because she is a mirror that can wake one up spiritually and develop a renewed spiritual awareness. Depending on who you are, you will join the hordes or become a light worker. A couple days later, I get a call and the voice says, I know you're part of some organization, Jason. What is the world coming to? And then have a nice life and click. The caller hangs up. This was weird, really weird. I still hear people singing and humming the Row Your Boat song, but I learned how to tune it out. We are architects of our own reality. And in my reality now, it's all love and light. This is what I choose. If you ever meet someone that says everything that seems too perfect, but makes your gut twist with dread, they might just be a pretty little liar who wants to feed on your soul energy. There are many infected with spiritual parasites, millions, hundreds of millions. Stick around with such a person and you will be infected with that spiritual parasite also. It can be removed, but it is not easy. There are things you would rather not have to learn about. Trust me on this. A little forbidden knowledge is interesting, but too much of it is, well, too much. Save yourself a trip to hell and just walk away from bad vibe people as soon as your intuition sounds the alarm bells. Your intuition will not come as words or messages. It will come as a feeling. Listen to it. This is the divine sending you an important message. 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 To my forest friends, thank you for listening to another horrible tale. Dusk is a time of transition. It is an owl's wake-up call. And as the shadows grow longer and darkness takes over, 
the only thing to fear is fear itself. Be still in the storm, and I promise you, you will be safe. Please help this channel grow to 10,000 subscribers by ripping at the subscribe button and scratching a comment. I read every single comment scratched here, and I look forward to visiting here on the Smoking Owl Tales channel on another night very soon. 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 Very soon.